valores e valores e valores e valores e valores As we do our theme song, Jesus, the light of the world. I'm sure your bones and your muscles are feeling wonderful. Heart the herald angels sing, Jesus, the light of the world. for prayer and in reverence we open our heart to our heavenly father let us pray great God and heavenly father we come before your awesome presence this evening recognizing that you are the light of the world we need you Lord we need you to shine your light in our hearts we need you, Lord, to shine your light in the communities where we are. Father, we see what the enemy of souls are doing, but we recognize tonight that the word of Jesus is here to transform lives. The words of Jesus is here to penetrate hearts and lives of men and women. We pray, dear God, that tonight, tonight, someone will cry out, I yield, I yield. I cannot hold it any longer. I have to surrender to Jesus. Father, I pray that as your manservant comes, as you give him the unction, may his brain function, may the spirit Present the word in him and through him to us and to all those who are around us. Father, we ask for a double portion of your Holy Spirit this evening. For we recognize that it is only you and you alone that can break shackles. Only you, al you alone can repair the family altars. Only you and you alone can save. And so, Lord, we pray that you will... In a special way tonight, move upon your people. And when all is said and done, may Jesus be magnified. When all is said and done, may Jesus be glorified. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name that God's people say amen and amen. Good evening, good evening, everybody. 
It's truly a joy to have you all here worshiping with us. You look so beautiful and wonderful. The glory of the Lord is truly on you all. You are a poultry set of people. And because you look so lovely, I want you to turn to the person beside you and say something nice to that person. Well, I see a person laughing and smiling. Yes, some of us might have had rather a rough day, but it's good to have some sweetness in our lives. So at this time, we are going to share this sweetness with people all around. As the praise tees team comes and help me sing, smile, everybody smile. And if you can't smile, let me teach you. You lift your mouth, push it to the left, and push it to the right, and you get a smile. So let us all greet somebody with a smile here today. Smile, everybody smile as we greet each other. presenting on caregiving. We'll be looking at ways to care for yourself while caring for others. So we'll be looking at the caregivers. And a caregiver, someone who gives care, it could be your mother. You'll be caring for a newborn, your children. It could be children caring for aged parents or a relative who is sick. And, and she forgot to tell her that it could be a husband caring for a wife. A spouse caring for a sick spouse, yes. The po spouse don't have to be sick. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. Amen. Yeah, right. Amen. So caring for yourself is one of the most important things that you can do as a caregiver. Caring for yourself. We can't pour from an empty cup. All right, wonderful. And so one other thing is that while you're giving care, you need to be able to reduce the personal stress that you will be facing. And there are ways that we can do that. And it, the, the personal stress come based on how we respond to various events and influences that are around us. And we need to adjust and cope with these. So you recognize a sign. If you realize you're get, getting irritable very easy and you're having sleep problems, you're forgetting things, time to take, check, and do something. And also, you need to ask for help because one of the things that we know is that many times, while women will always ask for help, the men will do what? Suffer silently. Uh, denial. denial. All right. So we need to ask for help. Accept help. And also ask, and even if you are refused, don't let that turn you off. Try again and also work 
by asking again and again and again. Even that might be reducing your stress. Right. Communicate your needs and stay active. Frequent exercise delivers. It gives you, it gives a whole lot of health benefits. Does the tongue count? Because we exercise our tongue very often, you know. Exercise the body. Oh, the body. All right. Exercise the body. No, exercise is a powerful energy and mood lifter. Aim for 30 to 60 minutes of exercise on most days of the week. We can start with 10. No, 30. Start with 30. Stay connected, brethren. One of the things that we need to do is to stay connected. Now, we have here by phone and email, but for me who grew up in the old time days, staying connected means that you need to be able to see, touch, and feel somebody near you. Mm -hmm. Right. Wonderful. And especially for those who have close friends, especially a new mother, you might not want to leave the baby. Even an hour or two, give yourself a break. Ensure you feed your baby, you know, and everything is done. You can ask a friend, come over, and you can take a walk, both of you together as a couple, or by yourself, get a little breather. It's okay. Relax. Learn to relax. Listen to your favorite um, music. Um, go and do some witnessing. Thank you very much, Uncle Mark. And above all, always spend time with God. Pray daily. Keep an ongoing prayer. You, may, you don't have to kneel. We all know that, right? You can be talking to him in your mind. God hears the most silent whisper. And the beauty about prayer and brethren, don't go to God with a shopping list. You ever notice that we go to God uh, and we beg him, beg him, beg him, beg him, but we are not with a grateful attitude. Give God thanks for the small things, like, like our 21 years. <laughs> Amen. It's small to him. It's big for me. Now, keep a prayer journal. At times, you may not be able to kneel and pray, but write it out. Write what you're going through. God understands. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Go and give care stress-free. God bless you. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Are we here to worship the Lord? Yes, we are here to worship God. And all of us can worship God tonight actively. As we give back to, the, to God the resources that he has given us. The preaching of the gospel here is wonderful. And God wants all of us to participate as we use our resources to enhance the kingdom of God. Either we are going to support two camps. Either we are going to support the camp of God or we are going to support the camp of Satan. And God wants all of us to support his camp by giving to him his resources. As we invite the ushers to stand in their place as we give to God an offering to further his cause. But just before we start to sing, the Lord is blessing me, let us pray. Almighty God, we pray in a very special way that you may help us to return to you and to give you of our resources to support your cause of the preaching of the gospel here. We pray, Lord, that you take control and help also, God, that as we work towards your kingdom, that all of us will be saved when you return. Help us, oh God, to give. Help us to give of our best to you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We are going to sing, give it with love.
everyone. Good night. Good night. God has truly been good to us, for he has allowed grace to always be greater than sin. And we pray that this song blesses your heart. In holy pages, this truth can be found. A promise to stand on when darkness abounds. Oh, right never loses in wrong name. everybody good evening good to see you here tonight we thank God for the beautiful ministry of music out here are you happy for the music amen and amen so have you had a good day today did you have a good day today oh yes oh yes good those of you who are online also I hope that you had a good day today. Uh, every day, somebody said every day above ground ought to be a good day. Amen. So we bless the Lord. We give him glory. 
and we thank you for being here tonight and we know that God is here and is available to pour out his blessings upon us. So, on Friday night, so we take a break tomorrow night, on Friday night we'll be back out here and the subject on Friday night will be quite interesting, reinventing ourselves God's way. So we look at that on Friday night, and then on Sabbath morning, we're going to have a beautiful time out here, and we're inviting you to be here. Uh, all our visitors who've been around us for some time, we're expecting you to be out here as well. It's going to be a great experience out here this coming Saturday as we come here to celebrate and to worship. You need to be here. Don't you miss it. It's going to be grand. And then I look at the subject this coming Saturday morning, the fear of God that conquers all fear. So I'm going to look at that, the fear of God that conquers all fear. It's going to be a beautiful message this coming Saturday morning. So make sure you are here. There are some beautiful features as well that you need to come and experience. And I guarantee you, once you are here this Saturday morning, you are going to leave this tent revived, full of life, and ready to face any tomorrow. So make sure you are here. Okay, uh, what else? I have a couple of things to do. Um, right. Now, do we have any visitors coming here for the first time tonight? Do we have any visitors coming for the very first time tonight? Okay, last night we had a few. Okay, we have a few tonight coming for the very first time. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking. I see your hands. I'm looking to see if we have our gifts available. Um, uh, I see the hands. Okay, raise your hands, raise your hands, raise your hands, raise your hands, raise your I see those hands. Come on, stop folding your arms and give them a round of applause. Give them a round of applause. Give them a round of applause. Amen. Make them happy. Happy to see you here for the very first time tonight. Where have you been? Ah? Uh? <laughs> okay. Good to see you here tonight. Good to see you coming in tonight. God bless you. God bless you. I see a hand over on this side as well. A couple of hands at the back there on this side. Okay. All right. Make sure, make sure they are satisfied. Okay. Great. All right. So visitors, let me tell you a secret. Now... We have two gifts that we will be giving out at the end of the series. Two gifts. And these are major gifts. One is a laptop. So that's the laptop right here. So anybody, minimum 30 visitors above, right? These are the folk at the end of the series, who will be considered. And one person will walk away with this prize, and the people say, Amen. Amen. Okay. And then we have... Okay. Um, <laughs> so we have the... Ta we, and, and then a tablet. Okay. <laughs> I get concerned about you. When I was growing up, tablet was like... What was tablet? Like pills, right? Okay, so it's an iPad we're going to have, something like that. Okay, but it's a tablet. Okay, all right. Okay, um, so we're going to have a tablet for the person. Don't go yet. For the person, so we'll, we'll show you that, I think, on Friday night. Um, for the person who gets 20 and above, so we're going to choose from that, and the person will have the tablet. So these are two major gifts that we are going to give away at the end. 
So we are asking you visitors, you can become a part of it every night when you come. Register your visitors, as well as the people uh, who brought you here. You can be a part of it as well. Register your visitors. And at the end, somebody will walk away with one of these prices. Okay, uh, prizes. So make sure that you pay attention. Okay, so thank you for coming. And then let's give our visitors tonight another round of applause and appreciate them for coming. Appreciate them for coming. Okay, so I also um, want to pass on greetings uh, to uh, the leaders here uh, in this territory, East Jamaica Conference. Uh, I got, um, got a... Some information today from Pastor Kerr, the leader of the Atlantic Caribbean Union that's in the Bahamas, who asked me to pass on greetings to all the saints here and leaders of East Jamaica Conference. Some of you would know Pastor Peter Kerr. God bless you, Pastor Kerr, as you continue to lead uh, in the other part of the vineyard there in the Bahamas. So we are here, and we are here enjoying ourselves in the Lord, notwithstanding. And the people say amen. amen. Because God wants us to be happy, and I do believe that. Okay, so I'm hoping that I kind of clear. Oh, no, 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 I didn't clear everything. I didn't clear. You got to you gotta, uh, just work with me. Um, that's why I write things down, right? Because I'm over 50. All right. Okay, so on, on Sunday, when? On Sunday, 6 p.m., 6 p.m. Okay, so before I tell you this, let me say this to you. Healing, healing is an unavoidable component of the proclamation of the gospel. Healing. Right? Whenever we are into the proclamation of the gospel, we have to pay attention to healing also. So, we're going to deal with health education from 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Um, starting this Sunday, uh, we'll have things like managing diabetes, uh, cancers and tumors, fibroids, prostate. Very important. So men, it's not if you're going to have prostate problem, it's when. That's just how it goes, right? <laughs> prostate problem coming, right? And you'll reach a point in your life when you have to get up every night and go to the bathroom, okay? So it's coming. But there's some really good education that you'll get out here. Pastor Nathan is going to be out here with his team. Uh, and they have some wonderful uh, education, health education. They will be dispensing out here to make sure we are ahead, right? And also to manage some of these uh, diseases that so many suffer with and also to kind of cut down the expenses. Let me ask you a question. Uh, is uh, health expensive here too? Is it expensive? Very. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I was saying it's cheaper here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's, let's really take advantage of what I just promoted from Pastor Nathan. So it's beginning at 6 p.m. this coming Sunday. All right, so let's move quickly to life moment. I think I've cleared all of these things that need to be cleared. Um, yeah, you know, I, I was really blessed by the, the, those who did the praise and worship tonight. Can we praise the Lord for them? Yeah, I was really blessed, I was really blessed. Can we praise the Lord for them? Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, now, 
There are lots of things that I learn from life. I have to learn because I don't want to make the same mistakes over and over again. Right? So I have to learn. Um, <clears throat> lots of people behave as though if something works for them, it will work for everybody. It's almost like a one-size-fit-all. Right? I don't want to measure everybody on the same standard and so on. I um, think that, you know, if it works for me, then it's a panacea for everybody. But life is, is really not like that. Uh, you know, a pastor is pastoring a church, and the ladies complained to the pastor that the men in the church were not very affectionate. And he should do something about it. <laughs> so the pastor decided, okay, he's going to try to do something about it. So he said he's gonna start, he was going to start first with the deacons. So he called the deacons in. And he had a good chat with the deacons told them what he has, he has heard, and he told them, you know what? I want every one of you in here to buy some flowers and take to your wives every week. So the deacons went about very obediently, and they did that. They were buying flowers. So after a few weeks, this particular lady got annoyed and asked her husband, what's this about? <laughs> so, so, so he said, well, the pastor met with the deacons and said that every deacon should bring flowers to their wives. So she got up on the phone and she called the pastor. She said, Pastor, my husband is going crazy. She said, what happened? He said, what happened? He's been bringing me flowers every week. So he said to her, well, the report came that the men are not very affectionate. So I met with them and I told them to bring the flowers. She said, Pastor, I'm married for 30 years. Tell my husband, affection for me means money. <laughs> it, it's kind of blunt, but you know, we have to understand that it's not one size fit all. It's not because it works for you, it's going to work for somebody else. Huh? Huh? John 10 and verse 10. John 10 and verse 10. You should know that text by now. John 10 and verse 10. The, the thief cometh not, but for what? For to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it how? More abundantly. And here is the truth. When Jesus gives us life, no man can take it away from us. No man. No one can take it away. Hallelujah. The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. No one can take it away. Our life, lives are lived in the context of a controversy between Christ and Satan. Jesus wants us to be happy. No doubt about it. Anybody you see around you trying to make your life miserable, they are sent by Satan. And there are times you ought to know it so you could say, get thee behind me. Because Jesus wants us to be happy. Satan wants us to be miserable. 
And the intention is to get us so frustrated and upset that we give up the life that Jesus gives us. But tonight, Satan is a liar. Jesus will prevail. The life that Jesus gives us, no man can take it away. Let's stand all over the tent. Sing our prayer song. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to get into this word. a woman yes yes beautiful help me believe in what i could be I know. and all that i am show me the stairway all we can do tonight. It's just one day at a time. 
we come before you tonight requesting that you be our close and constant companion. Tonight, Father, I pray again the same prayer that I've been praying since I got here. That the sweet, blessed Holy Spirit will have complete control over the message and the messenger and those who hear the message tonight. I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the sweet, blessed Holy Ghost will move in and among us. Take this word and bring it into the hearts and minds and lives of people tonight and bring conviction and conversion, transformation, reformation, revival. And tonight, oh God, give the word direction, clarity, simplicity, and efficiency. And oh God, get the glory, get the glory that belongs to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the people say, amen and amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. Woo! Amen. Amen. Come on in. Those of you who are coming in, come on in as we get into <coughs> this message. The message tonight is entitled, My Big Mouth and the Holy Spirit. This is an important message for me, and it will be for you as well. My Big Mouth and the Holy Spirit. Hmm. I know all of you here, I believe all, but I don't want to act like you know what I know. That is called the curse of knowledge. The curse of knowledge is to believe that people already know what you know, so you don't have to say it. So I don't want to make that blunder. So let me say, we have Matthew... Mark, Luke, and John. You know that, right? In your Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke were written, of course, before John. John was written very late. In fact, John was written when churches were already around. And Jesus had already ascended a long time ago. John was the last of the disciples, the apostles, to die. And it was good that he was around because the church was facing difficult issues uh, with people coming in with heresy, agnosticism, and other kinds of heresies that were coming to the church. The denial of Jesus coming in the flesh. And thank God John was still around. So John was able to really, under the guidance of the Spirit, put this gospel together of John to hand it out to the churches. For the most part, many of the churches were in conflict, members rising up against one another. And there were conflict fighting, women and women and men and men in conflict in the church. Hmm. And John writes to the churches, guess what? About the Holy Spirit. Woo. You see, since Pentecost, the churches seemed to have forgotten the role of the Holy Spirit in personal lives and the life 
of the church. So I want to read a few texts of scripture as we plant this foundation and structure this foundation for the message tonight. Turn to John chapter 14 and verse 16. John chapter 14 and verse 16. John chapter 14 and verse 16. So while you're finding that, let me tell you something, a little wisdom that my father-in-law gave me and I didn't understand it. I believe it was, I mean, I couldn't understand it, but I understood it later. So he told me, he told me, you see this, you see this person here, don't trust that person. He said, you could look at how his mouth is shaped and know he's a liar. No, <laughs> no, 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 I, So, uh, but Chambers, I, I don't know, um, but he was way ahead of me, so I, he had more wisdom. <laughs> but you know what? It all, it all came true, you know. I don't know, I don't know how we knew it. <laughs> okay, you, you have the text now? I'm ready for the text. Okay, let's go. That was just a little commercial there. Okay, John 14, 16. Let's go. What does it say? And I will, and I will pray, pray the, the Father... Father and he, and he shall, shall give, give you, you another, another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Some of the time. Forever. Forever. Okay, great. Another comforter. All right, verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Uh-huh. So we're going to be, he will not leave us alone. He will be there. He will come to us. Verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and uh -huh. bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Ah, ah, ah. This is, this is, this is good. So who is the Comforter? The Holy Ghost. And he shall teach you some things. All things and bring some things. All things to your what? Remembrance. Hmm. Okay, John 14 and verse 26. No, um, John 15, sorry. John 15 and verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, uh -huh. whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify. He shall of testify me. of me. Woo! John 16 and verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, Woo. the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Wow. Many times, the Holy Spirit is forgotten. So, as I get into the message, let's just say, welcome Holy Spirit. Come on. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Because Jesus has sent him. And he is here. So let's go again. Welcome, Holy Spirit. He's here. So, the churches were having a lot of quarrels. And they were condemning, people were condemning each other. Here John is giving a word to remind them that the Holy Spirit was given to help us in our troubles and in our problems. Yes, the words of Jesus, <laughs> in fact, before I go to that, the Holy Spirit helps us to behave like Jesus. Now, the words of Jesus were healing words. And even when Jesus chided people, he did it with, as one person said, tears in his voice. So go to Matthew 23, 37 and 38. Matthew 23, watch this, watch this. Matthew 23, 37 and 38. Let's read together. What does the Bible say? Oh, Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem, uh -huh. thou that killest the prophets and, and stonest them. them which are sent unto thee, uh -huh. how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicks under, under her, her wings, wings, and ye would not. Wow. Behold, your, your house. house is left unto you desolate. So, so, so even when Jesus had the most severe criticism for them, Yet he's crying in his voice. Uh, you see, too many people today <laughs> say something and then say the Holy Spirit told them to say when it is simply their response to a deep longing for what they wanted to say long time ago. But they said the Holy Spirit Tell them to say it. Hmm. You see, the Holy Spirit is God in action, working in and through obedient people. So turn to Acts chapter 5 and verse 32. We're coming on nicely. Acts chapter 5 and verse 32. Look at it right here. And we are what? Is witnesses. And we are witnesses of these things. And so is also. And so is the. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Whom God hath given to them. Whom God had given to them who obey him. So hold on. I'm going to read the text again. And tell me if I'm reading the wrong thing. It says. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so also the Holy Ghost. Whom God had given to them who speak in tongues. It says who obey him. Now, just as the father came into the world through Jesus Christ. So Jesus comes to the believer through the Holy Spirit. To give us power to witness and speak up in difficult times. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So almost, almost done with the foundation here. Then we're going to move into something else. Watch this. Watch this. Let's look at an example of what Jesus said in response to a set up. Hold on. There were some church leaders who set a trap for Jesus. Hold on. It's not just now church leaders set traps. <laughs> so go to John 8. I'm going to show you something about Jesus. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost. Turn to John 1, John 8, sorry, from verse 1. Let's read together. What does the Bible say? Jesus went on to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. Hold on. Now, when you read the last verse of John, of John 7, I'm not going there. The last verse said, all of them went home. That's what it says. They went home. You see, a lot of people, you believe, going home from a church gathering, go elsewhere, to plan problems. And that's what's happening here. So keep on reading here. What does it say? And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. Ah. And when they had set her in the, in the midst, they <laughs> said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the Hold very on. act. You have to get a picture of this. I said... The religious leaders set up this woman. 
And they did it because they wanted to trap Jesus. So guess what? They set the thing up so they didn't go home. Enough. They set it up. I don't know how they convinced the woman, but they set it up. And while the man and the woman were engaging in adultery, they rushed in. The two people naked. I mean, the man probably nearly had a heart attack. So they, they took the woman now, watch this, and they brought her. <laughs> but the man wasn't there. Now a woman can't commit adultery by herself. Keep on reading. Watch this. Now Moses in his law commanded us. Oh, Moses in his law commanded what? Us. That uh -huh. such should be stoned. Should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Ah, watch this. Watch this. Watch this now. This, Go ahead. This Go they ahead. said. Go ahead. You see, how, you see how nice, you see how nice some religious leaders sound? Oh, they, they sound really good. What sayest thou? This All they right. said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse ah. him. Ah. But Jesus stooped down and ah. with his finger wrote on the ground <laughs> as though he Keep heard them not. Uh -huh. so Jesus, when, Jesus, Jesus acted like he didn't even hear them. <laughs> right? there, there's some people you got, you got to just keep focus, you know. You act like you didn't see, he didn't hear them and just started to write in the dust. Keep on going. And when Keep they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, uh -huh. let him first cast a stone at Woo. her. Woo. And again he stooped down and wrote, and on, wrote the ground. on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, mm. went out one by one, mm. beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. Woo. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Listen to this question. Woman, when, when Jesus had lifted up himself and mm -hmm. saw none but the woman, uh -huh. he said unto her, uh -huh. Woman, where are those thine accusers? Mm. Hath no man condemned thee? Mm. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, hmm. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and, and sin, no, sin more. no more. So Watch the trap that they set for Jesus. One, if Jesus agreed with them, say stone the woman to death, Jesus would be in problem with the Roman law. Because the Romans did not see that, right, as any behavior for capital punishment. So he'd have been in problem with the Roman government. Huh? And if he went against the law of the Bible... Which says, thou shall not what? Commit adultery. Then he would have been in problem with the people. Because the people knew. So they already examined that Jesus only had two options. But I told you, Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost. So they didn't anticipate that Jesus had a third option. What was the third option? He began to write. <laughs> because he knew, John 2 said, he knew every man and knew everything that was in man. So he started to write. And once he started to write, and the folk, they came and they look. Uh, and notice here, Jesus kept his mouth shut. Uh, eh, you, sometimes you, you can't expose it. Oh, anybody hearing me in here? You got to keep your big mouth shut sometimes. <laughs> Some of you talk too much. You trip up yourself. 
they, he was writing, and they came and they look, and when, when they saw, they, they were wise. They never said a word. But hold on. So what was needed were witnesses to cast the first stone. The woman got up, looking all disheveled. I said they took the woman out of a, 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 an adulterous act. That's how cruel people are. And they brought her in the midst. One thing they did right. They brought the woman. <laughs> you have the answer. <laughs> at the feet of Jesus. <laughs> uh, they brought the woman. At the feet of Jesus. Uh, Jesus lifted her up. Said. Where, look up. Where are your accusers? <laughs> said, I don't know. None, Lord. Well, he said, and this is, this is how one responds to grace. This is how one responds to grace. The response to grace is not to get rid of the law. No, the response to grace is to go and sin no more. Did you get it? Did you get it? So, the response to grace is not getting rid of the law. The response to grace is to go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Woo. So the woman got away. Oh yes, the law of God cannot be set aside. No. The men came, looked from the eldest to the youngest, and walked away. The witnesses are supposed to throw the first stone. He that is without sin. Cast the first stone. Huh? But none is there to do that. Jesus said. Neither do I condemn thee. Go. And sin no more. Oh are we happy for Jesus tonight? Are we happy for Jesus tonight? He was filled with the Holy Ghost. So I'm saying this to you tonight. Don't use your mouth to destroy people. Use your mouth to build up people. Hold on, talk to me. Right? Because we are all human beings. We are common in this. Sometimes, right, you're in places... And you can actually feel that people like, as you put it here, like people chatting you, right? Yeah. Talk, talk to me. Yeah. Like you, you kind of feel that some, like, like they're saying something about you. Yeah. 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 Woo, watch this. I want you to turn to Proverbs 18 verse 21. We're coming on nicely. Coming on nicely with the message. Proverbs 18 verse 21. Coming on nicely. With the message. Let's go to that. What does the Bible say? Death and life what? Let's wait for the, let's wait for the reader. Death and life what? Are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Ah. Death and, death and life are in, power, in the power of the tongue. Hold on. So I was saying that people use their mouth to destroy. In fact, people the world over have used their mouth to ruin relationships they ruin them in the home, ruin them in the school, ruin them in the church, ruin them at work. <laughs> the fact is, when you see some people, their first name is ruin. <laughs> God help me. <laughs> so, the speech center of the brain controls the nerve. So if you get up one day and you call in sick and you're not sick, it's likely that you could get sick.
because the speech center of the brain controls the nerves. There's something else. Words can heal. Words can hurt. When I was growing up as a kid, we used to all hear stick and stones can break my bone. Words can't do. That's a lie. Words can break you. You know, John had his experience of using his mouth to condemn others. In fact, Jesus was trying to go to Jerusalem, his last visit there, to experience the horrific experience of the, of the crucifixion. And, and as he set his head to go to Jerusalem, the Samaritans noticed his head toward Jerusalem. And because the Jews and the Samaritans could not agree, and they were hostile to one another, the Samaritans would not allow Jesus to come through Samaria. Uh, and because that village of the Samaritans were resistant to Jesus, John, the same John we're talking about, before he was filled with the Holy Ghost, John said, Jesus, why don't you call fire down like Elijah and execute all of them? he said <laughs> Jesus said I didn't come here to condemn I couldn't come here to save lives so how you talk to people and about people how you talk about people has a lot to do with how you feel about them You know what? The Holy Spirit can change mouths for the better. <laughs> uh huh. What Listerine can do, the Holy Ghost can do. So the same John, the same John who had nothing good to say about the Samaritans, when the Holy Ghost got a hold of him, in the gospel, John gave a long story about a Samaritan woman. Ah, a woman who was of a despicable character, transformed by Jesus, transformed by Jesus, Ah, uh, transformed by Jesus. And she brought out a whole village to see Jesus. Look at how the mouth of John was transformed. Our mouths need the Holy Ghost. Hmm. And God wants to change some mouths tonight. Oh yes. Oh yes. Lipsticks can't change mouth. You just have a pretty bad mouth. <laughs> but God wants to change mouths tonight. Hallelujah. Change mouths in here tonight. Cursing mouths. Swearing mouths. Condemning mouths. God wants to change mouths tonight. And on the day of Pentecost, you know, John was a part of a miracle. I'm going to share it with you right now. John was a part of a miracle that had to do with the mouth. So, we are going to pick it up quickly. And then after that, I just have one or two more texts and we're done out of here. Okay, so let's go to this. Acts chapter 2. Then I'm going to tell you what we're going to do once we get through with the message. Acts chapter 2. Let's go from verse 1. I want you to read this. 
Acts and, chapter 2. What does it say? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, <laughs> they were all with one accord in one place. Woo. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing a mighty, Russian wind. mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Mm. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues ah. like as a fire. Uh -huh. And it sat upon each of them. Uh -huh. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. All filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began Hold on. That in, that's including, including John, you know. Yes. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, Let's go. And they began to speak with other tongues mm -hmm. as the Spirit gave them utterance. Uh -huh. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, Jews. devout men out of every nation under on heaven. The heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the, the multitude, multitude came together. And were confounded because, because that every man heard them speaking his own language. In his what? Own language. In his, so, so watch the miracle God is doing through these mouths that were once upon a time foul mouths. Watch how God changed the mouth. And now God is using them to speak language. Language of nations that they didn't know. Let's keep reading. And they were all amazed and, and marveled, marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Mm. And how hear we every man in his own tongue, huh. wherein we were born? We were born. The Parth Parthians. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to read this so you could see the, all the different language groups that were there. That's why I want you to read that. The Parthians, the Medes, and the Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, uh -huh. and in Judea, and Cappadocia, uh -huh. and Pontus, uh -huh. and Asia, uh -huh. Phrygia, and Pamphylia, uh -huh. in Egypt, uh -huh. and in the parts of... Uh, uh, help me now, preacher. <laughs> 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 we need the Holy Spirit here. <laughs> where, where are you? <laughs> where are you? Pamphylia, that's where you are, in uh, Egypt? Tell <laughs> And the parts of Libya yeah. about Cyrene and strangers, and strangers of Rome, Jews and Jews proselytes, Cretes and, and Arabians, uh -huh. we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you have all these background knowledge and languages coming in, uh, and every one of them hearing in their own language. This was not gibberish. That's not what this is. This is not what you see in many places that they call speaking in tongues. That, that's not what this is. This is what the Holy Ghost was sent to do. When there is a difficult time and you can't handle it, the Holy Ghost will step in. And help. He is the helper. So the Holy Ghost is not there for the sake of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not there to be praised. The Holy Ghost is there for the sake of Jesus. The Holy Ghost is there for Jesus to be exalted. So, look at this one now. Go to Acts chapter 2. Watch this. So now all these people hear it. And we're going to go to Acts chapter 2, 22 to 24. Watch this. Read it. What does it say? Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Mm. Jesus of Nazareth, uh -huh. a man approved of God. Hold on. This is Peter speaking. Yes. The soul winning partner of John. Because he and John would be moving together. Listen to what he's saying. Ye men of Israel, what? Hear these words. Uh -huh. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders uh -huh. and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, hmm. as ye yourselves also know. Uh -huh. Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, uh -huh. ye have taken uh -huh. and by wicked hands have crucified Woo. and slain, hmm. whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of mm. death, 
because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. This, For this, this Peter is changed. This Peter, the Holy Ghost, has changed his mouth. Are you hearing me? Now he's declaring the gospel. He's changed. Now he preached this gospel. And I'm going to show you some other things. Go to verse 36. Go to verse 36. Go to verse 36. And a few verses down. What does it say? Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly uh -huh. that God hath made that same Jesus ah. whom ye have crucified, uh -huh. both Lord and Christ. Lord and Christ. Keep on reading. Now when they heard this, Woo. they were pricked in their heart uh -huh. and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men, Men and, and brethren, brethren, what shall we do? Huh. Then Peter said unto them, repent. So, so what did they ask? What shall we do? I mean, he told them the gospel. He told them that you were the one who put him on the cross. He told them that, that, that the grave that they dug for him could not hold him. And because the grave they dug for Jesus could not hold him, Whatever grave they dig for you and me cannot hold us. So they ask, what shall we do? Keep on reading. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in Woo! the name of Jesus Christ uh -huh. for the remission of sins. Uh -huh. And ye shall receive and ye the, shall gift, receive the gift of the Holy the Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. For the promise is unto you and to your children. And to your children. And to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Ah, uh, watch this now. And watch this. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, uh -huh. saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Uh -huh. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Mm. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Go back to verse 40. Go back to verse 40. Woo. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves. You're still at 41, isn't it? 40. So, is this 40 or 41? And with many other words, that's 40. Okay. All right. And with sure. many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Back up the text. The, the one who, uh, whoever's handling the text, could you just back it up? Yeah, yes, you got it right. Read that. <laughs> then, then Peter. Then Peter said <laughs> unto them, that's 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent uh -huh. and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Uh -huh. And ye shall receive the, the gift, gift of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you. Is unto you. And to your children. And to your children. And to all that, and to are, all that far are far off. off even, even as, as many. many as the Lord, as the or, Lord God or God shall call. shall call. Watch this. So, when Peter said that, the men who were there walked up, got baptized. They experienced the remission, the forgiveness of their sins. They repented from what, from what they did to Jesus. On the cross. You know that's why you don't give up on people. Because you never know. I said they repented. They received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And guess what? When they were finished, they went home. Because Peter said, it's not just for you. It's for your children. So the people, the men, went home. And they, under the Holy Ghost power, 
evangelize their children. Evangelize their wives. And at the end of the day, 3,000 people were baptized. Remember last night, I was telling you, we need to wage spiritual violence. Huh? We're going to do that again tonight. Because it's the home that Satan begins his destruction. We have to reclaim the home. Reclaim the home. Evangelize your children. So, Repentance is not just for adults. Repentance is for children. Forgiveness is not just for adults. Forgiveness is for children. Receiving the Holy Ghost is not just for adults. Receiving the Holy Ghost is for children. Baptism is not just for adults. Baptism is also for children. Whew. Let me tell you this. Evangelize your house. Evangelize your house. Don't fight the Holy Ghost. Evangelize your own house. Uh, because that's where the destruction, Satan wants to begin the destruction. When you turn your back on them and say you're not going to deal with your children, Satan has room to deal with them. And it could be painful. It could be absolutely painful. Yes, so here's where I'm going to finish right here. Saints, brothers and sisters, I want you to know don't let your mouth trip you up. When you are angry, it's better to just be quiet and don't say anything. Because when you are angry, the blood doesn't flow to your brain. It flows to your extremities. You're not rational. And how many of us have said things that now we regret, we said. But you said it because you were angry. Hmm. Listen, we don't receive the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit's sake. We receive the Holy Spirit for the sake of Jesus Christ and his mission. Jesus has made the Holy Spirit available to us, but we have to use our faculties and respond for his action in our lives to take effect. The Holy Spirit is not our property. No, no. Therefore, the Holy Spirit must use us. We can't use the Holy Spirit. Huh? Huh? The Holy Spirit will use us to impact the world. The Holy Spirit begins with the particular, meaning he comes upon us individually and he gets into us individually. Uh, when we surrender to Christ, when we are baptized, the Holy Spirit comes into us. And many of us, probably aren't even aware of that. So back in 1980, when I got baptized, the Holy Spirit came into me. Huh? 
took hold of my life. I am a temple of the Holy Ghost. Huh? He comes in, took me over, anointed me in a particular way so that I can be on mission to the world. So tonight, I am here because of the Holy Ghost who has washed my big mouth. And I am here to tell you with this big mouth that sin is a human problem. Sin is a universal problem. Sin is an internal and external problem. Sin is a deadly problem. But I'm also here to tell you, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. I'm here to tell you tonight that the law is not abolished. Jesus came here to magnify the law. I'm here to tell you that. Matthew 5, 17. Matthew 5, 17. That's the last text. Think not. That I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am <clears throat> not come to destroy but to fulfill. Jesus came to magnify and to carry out the law. I am here to tell you tonight. Repent. And be baptized. Every one of you. For the forgiveness of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this is not just for you. But for your children. And your whole household. Tonight. Tonight, tonight, tonight. This is our continuation of the move of God in our homes that we began last night. The move of God in our homes. It's called waging spiritual violence. It's Matthew 11 and 12 that talks about it. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. What Jesus did on the cross was the price paid for much of the blessings, all of the blessings, sorry, that we need in our home. But they've been blocked. They've been blocked because the work of Satan. They've been blocked. But in this tent, at this altar, we are breaking against those barriers. Those barriers. Whether they come from your generational line, where well, it's a generational curse. Whatever Satan has put in your way to cause you to just spin around and not going anywhere, this tent is designed to break it. So, as the praise team comes, we are going into homes tonight again in the homes and let me tell you this just as we did last night because we have to always remember it's not about us it's about others put others before ourselves so our guests our visitors who have come you will come first as we wage spiritual violence you will come first it's your home first. We are going into your home first. Because the greatness of Jesus in sending the Holy Ghost is that we can be here and the Holy Ghost moving like a magnet cleaning up your house. So you're going to be the first one coming up. And once you get up, yes, then the others of us will come standing together in solidarity and believing that God will step in and clean up our homes. Anybody believe that? Anybody believe that? So you know the first thing we got to do, we got to go into a little confession. 
So Psalm 51, we got to go into a little confession. Stand to your feet. We got to go into a little confession. Because, because this is the truth. All have sinned. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. All have sinned. So we're going to a little confession. And I want you to open up your mouth. Because the Holy Spirit is giving you utterance. Open up your mouth. Because he is, he's cleaning our mouth tonight. Hallelujah. May I tell you that the Holy Ghost is better than Listerine. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, may I tell you tonight that Holy Ghost is better than Colgate. What else y'all use here? What else we use here? Huh? Woo. Woo. The Holy Ghost can do it. So are you ready? Confession time. Open up your mouth. Have, have, have mercy. mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, uh -huh, do blot what? out my transgressions. Wash me th truly from my iniquity uh -huh. and cleanse me from my sin. Uh -huh. For I acknowledge my transgressions uh -huh. and my sin is ever before me. Woo. Against thee, thee only have I, have sinned, I sinned and, and done, done this, this evil. evil in thy sight. That, that thou, thou mightest, mightest be justified, be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. Uh -huh, almost dear. Behold, Behold, I was what? Shapen in iniquity. Shapen in iniquity. And in and sin, in did, sin my mother, did my mother conceive, conceive me. Behold, mm. thou desirest truth, truth in the inward, in the inward part, and in the, and in the hidden part, part thou, thou shalt, shalt make, make me to know wisdom. wisdom. Mm. Purge me with Esau, and, and I, shall I shall be, be clean. clean. Wash, Wash me, me, and I shall be whiter than almost snow. Almost there, almost there. Make, make me, to, me hear to hear the joy and gladness. And gladness. That, that the, the bones, bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Mm. Hide not Hide. thy face from ah. my sins. And, and blot out blot all out. my transgressions. And then verse 10. That's where we end tonight. Create, Create in me. In me. What kind of heart? heart? What kind of heart? A clean heart. A clean heart. Oh and God. do what? A right spirit. And renew a, a right, right spirit, spirit within, within me. me. Do you believe that Jesus? Do you believe do you believe tonight in the name of Jesus that God has accepted our confession? Do you believe it? Well, if you believe it, say amen. If you believe it, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So as they sing, our guests, our visitors, you first come. We are going straight into your home. Straight into your home. And then the others will come. Don't waste time. Press on and come on up. Go ahead. Go ahead. God bless you. Come on up. Come on up quickly. God bless you. God bless you. You're coming. Just as you are. Make your way up. Make your way up. Make your way up. Here. The Spirit's call. Make your way up. 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 We are going straight into your home tonight. Straight into your home tonight. Straight in your home. Straight in your home. Straight in your home tonight. If you are hearing me outside the tent, back of the tent, middle of the tent, front of the tent. Make your way up. 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 Back of the tent. Middle of the tent. Wherever you are, make your way up. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. Make your way up. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. Come quickly. Come quickly. Children, if you are here, it's for you too. If you were here, it's for you too. Children, if you were here, it's for you too. Young people, if you were here, it's for you too. It's for you too.
on up. Can't now, you hear now, the spirit visitors call. and others now who are still out there who need to come. Just you can come. You, you can make your way up. You can make your way up because we are going. We are going right into your home tonight. We are going right into your home. I'm starting with you. It doesn't matter what people say in the world. God expects men to lead. It doesn't matter. People can say whatever they want to say. Men, I'm talking to you first. You, men, I want to hear coming out of your mouth these words. We belong to God. I can't hear men. You sound weak. You can't let... Men, you can't let the women sound stronger than you. Your voice must be heard. Men, are you ready? Let's go. We belong to God. Let me go to the women. Because the women are frustrated with us, you know. Because we are not playing our role. Women. I want to hear from you. We belong to God. We belong to God. Go ahead, women. We belong to God. You see, I want us to agree. Because in the name of Jesus, I'm going into your home. In the name of Jesus. That's why I want us to agree tonight. Are you ready? Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Oh God and Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. And I'm asking first, oh God, that you will wash me thoroughly 
and purge me and apply the merits of the cross to me first. Because God, there is a burden upon me tonight. Apply the merits of the cross. Forgiveness and mercy and grace and inheritance. Clean me up. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Create in me, O God, a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me. Put away self. Put away self. Let the Holy Ghost beat back self. And let me pray in the Holy Ghost. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, there are people right here in and at this altar who have not gotten a good break. The enemy has stolen what belonged to them. And tonight we are praying in the name of Jesus, sweet blessed Holy Ghost, that you break shackles and give them back what the devil stole from them. God, some of them, their innocence have been stolen and they have to live with guilt. But remind them that their guilt was paid for on the cross. Some of them, oh God, feel that all honor is gone from them. But remind them that shame was paid for on the cross. And then there are those here tonight, oh God, who, who are fearful. They are afraid. Remind them that you paid for them to have power. So now, Lord, in the homes... I'm asking you to begin to clean some things out. I'm asking that the Holy Spirit will go right now and clean up the house. Clean up the house. Clean up the house. Beat back demonic spirits. Clean up the house. Remove negative things out of the house. Clean up the house. Oh God, clean up the house in the name of Jesus. Remove, oh God, Drugs, clean up the house. Remove alcoholic beverages, clean up the house. Remove, oh God, every vice and every yielding to temptation to do wrong. Clean up the house. Oh God. There's something else. Right here. Right here. In this crowd. Satan is attempting to afflict people with diseases. But we come against it in the name of Jesus. That no one here will be afflicted by Satan. With any disease. So God, as you clean up the house, clean up the bodies of the people that are here. Clean up their colons. Clean up their kidneys. Clean up their stomach. Clean up the cells. Clean them up with the blood of Jesus. Wash them out. Give them a divine blood transfusion. Clean them up. And oh God, when they go home tonight, let them feel right in that house a peace that they've never felt before. A peace that they've never felt before. When they go home tonight, 
And once they feel that, oh God, I pray that they will rejoice. And on that moment, they will walk by faith and not by sight. They will trust you. They will believe in you. They will not allow shame to take them over. They will not allow guilt to control them. They will not allow fear to control them. Because he whom the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. We claim the victory by faith. Victory over sin. Victory over Satan. Victory over cancer. Victory over high blood pressure. Victory over diabetes. Victory! Oh God! Over mental depression. Victory! In Jesus. My Savior! Forever. Oh, we claim victory because we walk by faith and not by sight. Holy Spirit, I know that you are in the homes of these people right now. And the place is clean. The place is ready for new people. New people coming home to live in a new house. Oh, Holy Ghost, you are a great God. And we thank you for the leverage of prayer that reaches to every place, every house here tonight. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you hallelujah. And we thank you for hearing our prayers. In the name of Jesus we pray. And all the people say, before I bless you, before I bless you, before I bless you, men are coming back to you. Because God need you. I'm coming back to you. Men, I want you, before I get to the women, I want you men to shout amen and hallelujah. Men, you sound better this time. Your house seems clean now. Let's go men again. Let's hear the women over here now. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. We still got to do something. Men and women, let's go together. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I want to bless you before you go. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace on the road as you go home tonight. Peace in the clean house made clean by Jesus tonight. Peace in your family. Peace in your marriage. Peace in your body that has been healed tonight. Peace in your mind that God has touched tonight. And peace deep down in your soul. And peace with God. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and all the people say, yeah. give the Lord a hallelujah as you go. It's the highest praise. It's the highest praise. Hallelujah. God bless you. See you on Friday night. Troublesome times are here. Troublesome times. Chasing rocks, see 
Morning, morning. morning. 